Okay, we're gonna we're gonna start. Um, everybody's got a book, or you have somebody you can share with. Okay. All right. So this is this is something new. This is something new we're doing. There, everybody got their book. Hold it up. Okay. There's gonna be twelve of these. So each one will have a subject matter. Um, I have the first one out. It is on praying for, uh, it's the prayers in Ephesians that Paul prays. So it's talking about a, a template for how to pray uh, for revelation and uh, you know the subject matter of, of Ephesians chapter 17 through 20, chapter one, verses 17 through 23. Okay, this one is volume two. It's based on the subject of protection. And what I do, the Lord instructed me to teach prayer school, but teach it from the, well, how I pray. I, I just take these scriptures and this is what I pray. So I don't pray for my health. I don't pray for money. I, I don't, I, I pray for people and intercede for them. But the prayers that I pray are from, just from the scriptures, I personalize them. And so in the early days, I actually, uh, when I wrote a book, I wrote a study guide and a prayer book as well for, for the first couple books. But then um, we went a different way with the spirit schools. We got big and this was when we were little and I didn't think I was gonna write more than what I wrote that, that first year and I was wrong. <laughs> okay, so the Lord asked me to do prayer school and to take passages of scripture and that I use to pray over. So like the third one, I'm working on it right now, is, is from Romans 8. And it'll probably be two volumes, but it'll be, I, change, I teach you how to make prayers out of these things because that's what I do. So John 15 will be another one, will be a, a book. So when we're done with those 12, which will be sometime next year, when we've gone through all 12, then we're gonna start healing school. So there'll be the 12, 12 books on, on healing, where we'll have, we'll have uh, teaching and then we'll have prayer for healing. So here I'm going to teach on prayer and then Kathy's gonna lead you in prayer. And um, that's the format. Okay, so for protection, I essentially saw that prayer how this all started was I was taken to the throne room and I, I, was, I was seated in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. And so that's the study guide you have, that whole idea of that book, praying from the heavenly realms and the study guide. That whole idea is, is that I pray from heaven to the earth. I don't pray from the earth to the heaven. Because Jesus said, Pray this way, thy will be done on the earth as it already is in heaven. So thy kingdom come and thy will be done on the earth as it already is in heaven. That's how Jesus told us to pray. So think about what I just said and, and realize that what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm changing the direction of our prayers from being seated because Paul said in Ephesians chapter two, if you look at five and six and seven and in Ephesians two, talks about being seated with him in the heavenly realms. Okay, and also in the Colossians, he wrote the same thing because Colossians is a really a parallel letter to the Laodiceans as well as Colossae. So Laodiceans were included in on that. So in chapter three, it talks about setting our affections on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. and 
this is how we're supposed to pray is from the seat of authority that's been given to us as fellow heirs, co-laborers, you know, been given the name of Jesus. We have authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. It, you have to change your mindset. And most people have not had that happened, happen because I, you can listen and hear how we all talk and you can tell where we're at. You can tell where we're going to go. You can predict where people are going by just listening to them because they're, 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 they're steering their life by their tongue. It's the rudder. Okay, so that's how this all happened. Jesus, everybody's um, coming back in still. So, But um, when I was seated there, I told you how I saw the saints worshiping God. And it was at the end of the age. And then he turned to me when I said, I'm, I'm going to go down and worship you. And he said, no, I want you to sit here. I bought this for you. He said, he who overcomes will sit with me on a throne. And he quoted, you know, a, a Revelation uh, chapter, I believe, two. And he was saying that to one of the churches. And I knew that that was there, but it felt uncomfortable for me to be seated up there, you know, with the Father and the Son when everybody else was worshiping. But the whole encounter was to show me these scriptures. Because they're, if you really understand these scriptures, they would be uncomfortable to you. If you don't understand them, they're comfortable. <laughs> because I, I lived it, I was there. And Jesus said, no, this is prayer. He said, you stay seated right here. This is prayer. I go, this is prayer. I didn't learn that at Rhema. And, I, and that's not a bad thing. I didn't say that to him. I'm just thinking that. Is that, you know, we got to have faith and, you know, we're, we're calling the things that are not as they were, you know, all that. And um, that's all valid. The only thing was, is sitting there with him and him calling that prayer, it was a conversation. It was a relationship. But it wasn't necessarily words of me and him talking. It was communion in the spirit. So I was sitting there and he said, this is where you come in prayer. This is prayer. And I was shocked because it was all new to me, even though I knew everything that I, uh, you know what I've learned because you know the schools I went to and then you also know, um, you know, the scriptures, okay? But Jesus said that this is what you do when you are in prayer. You come and sit with me here and you sit here until you get the answer. He said, as soon as you get the answer, take the answer back to the earth with you. He said, there are no questions at the throne, only answers. And so that's why I do it the way I do. That's why I don't pray about certain things. Because I saw that God wants to finance each one of us because he's a father. He's not going to finance your bad habits, but he wants to support and pay for everything. That's the bottom line. What he likes is when you do everything you can do on your own, and then he makes up the difference. And there'll come a place where you can be trusted and then more will happen. Okay, so that's how I teach prayer is I bring the will of God down here that's in heaven. I bring the kingdom down here that's in heaven. The only way to do that is, is, is to have bold and forceful faith. But faith to me is being fully convinced. It means I have, I have the substance of things hoped for. It means I have the title deed or the evidence of things not seen. I have it. I know it. So I don't pray for certain things that are really big. I don't even mention it. I actually let God speak to me about it, and then I say that's fine. So all the things you see happening, everything, even the aircraft, 
never prayed for it, never asked for it, never. Never, never, I would walked away from it. He brought it up. And then he sent men and women of God, the proper way a prophet should be used, is to confirm what God has spoken to you, not something new. If I would have listened to prophets, I'd be married to seven women right now. And I just need one. And if she wasn't here, I'd say something. No, it's good. no. It's 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 not it's not up to us to determine what God wants. God sets things in our life. Solomon didn't need nine hundred wives. I checked it out. It clearly says in the law that we're supposed to have one wife. So why did David have so many? Okay, it doesn't make it right just because they did it. Right? Okay, it's the same thing with prayer. Who's going to be the first to say we're doing it wrong? Perhaps the fact that we're prayerless is because we're not getting answers to prayer which is because we're not praying correctly. Okay, so you get discouraged and you're, you become prayerless because it doesn't work. But see, real prayer always works. But what I saw, if you can accept it today, is I saw that the Lord actually hands you title deeds to what He wants for you. He literally hands them to you and you got it. And that is faith. But see, you would think that you gotta work it and you gotta work yourself up into some sort of frenzy. But see, it's really a mental that what you're doing. You can't mentally agree with God because he's not a brain, he's a spirit. So you can't communicate with him in the mind because God is not a mind. He communicates through the spirit. So everything happens in a spirit first, then that causes something to manifest in your mind and in your your body and in this realm. Okay, so I saw that what my assignment would be is to get the body of Christ mature and in unity so that anything we agreed upon would be done. But see, we could agree upon it because it was God's will. Because we knew God's will. And this is what I saw, is we're supposed to know what God's will is. And that's like the number one question I get. The number one and number two question are this. I, 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 I want to know God's will. How do I know God's will? And how can I hear His voice? Those two things should never be asked as a Christian. I'll think about what I just said. Why couldn't you communicate with your Father, your Heavenly Father, if you're a spirit that's born again, and He's a spirit, you should have a direct line. Okay, so what it is, it's the battle down here in your mind and in your body that cause you to have many, many voices that confuse you. And cause it, it's hard to hear God's voice. It's hard to know what God is saying, His will. Okay, so what He showed me was is to write these books to make a template on how to pray based on Scripture so that you're praying out the will of God. It's a given. If you pray the Scripture, you're going to get it. And what it does is it builds your confidence up so that you can start calling the things that are not as though they were because you, they are. But you have to start out with training wheels. Well, what better way than just to use a scripture? Has it come to that? <laughs> but you gotta build your confidence up. You can't just step in and speak to mountains. They might, they might fall on you. You might have some failures. And, and then you might become prayerless because of that. See, you might back off of all these things because you, you didn't connect. My whole thing is, is that God wants to connect with you where you're at. He's not waiting for you to get good enough. He wants to connect with you right where you're at, but I guarantee you won't stay there very long because he's always moving. Okay, Psalms 91.1. Use the New Living Translation. It's the one I recommend as a base. New Living Translation, okay. 
Then I use the Passion Translation, which is the Aramaic, which is what Jesus spoke. So I don't know why they have such a problem with it. Because he spoke Aramaic. Then I use the Amplified as well, and I break it down even more. Then I give you a space where you can take some notes. So I'm gonna start. So you take some notes, and then you can formulate a prayer based on what you just read in the three translations I gave you. And through a small discourse, you can formulate a prayer. And then that's what you pray every day. I guarantee you, the angels will show up and you'll have protection. Because they hearken unto his voice, which is in Psalms 91. Okay? The voice of God is his word. Okay? It's a sure thing. Okay, so let's get started. Psalms 91. Um, Let's see here. 91.1, it says, Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And the Passion Translation says, When you sit enthroned under the shadow of Shaddai, you are hidden in the strength of God Most High. And then the Amplified says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no enemy can withstand. And so... Through these three translations, I formulate a prayer based on all those adjectives, all those different descriptions and the different um, variances, because some of it adds a little more color to it. And then I, I pray, I make a prayer, which I state back to God, and I'll show you how I do it. What I, what I do is I, I broke the Passion Translation down, because um, the, the, the problem that I had with with um, the coming back was when Jesus talked to me, he was quoting himself. But there were times where he said things, he even said the scripture that he was speaking of. He would quote it, chapter and verse, tell me who he was talking to. And I didn't know it was in the Bible and I had a degree in theology. And when I came back, I was bedridden for days. But after three weeks, I was able to get up and I started looking up these scriptures. And sure enough, Jesus was right. But it didn't, it didn't sound, it didn't sound like anything I had heard. And, and I don't know why I couldn't connect with certain things. And I had been to the Assemblies of God College and got a degree, and then I, I came to Rama. And I'm not blaming any of them. I'm just saying that this is my journey, and I had to up my game somehow because I realized that I wasn't really as, as knowledgeable as I thought. And it was is humbling to me. So I realized that there was a disconnect with what was said and promised in Psalms 91 and what was happening with people. And that's why I chose this to pray this out because Jesus showed me that when he walked by, he walked by the cleft of the rock when Moses was in that cleft. He walked by and he let the glory from his face shine. So Jesus, when he visits people, the ones you hear about on, on TV programs and books and things like that, when Jesus appears, he doesn't show the glory. He doesn't show the glory through his face. There, there's the glory around him, but God the Father, he is in full glory. His face has beams coming out of it. And when it hits you, you can't function in this realm anymore like 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 you think you can because your body has now has to house a, your spirit that has seen the father which is absolute perfection and something happens to your spirit that's what that's what started happening to moses and so moses wasn't allowed to see the face of god because he wouldn't be able to live the body his body would would melt and that's what I saw in heaven. So this right here, when Jesus appears to people, he actually has ability to tone it down somehow. It doesn't come through his face. The only time was when he came into that room with my roommate, he came in as full glory. And we knew, we, we talked. Both of us knew that if we looked at his face, we would die. We, we thought that anyway. It, the fear of the Lord was so strong I didn't, my flesh, I felt like my flesh was vibrating on my bones to where it was separating. I felt like a half a chicken, you know, 
on somebody's plate, you know, it was just debone it, you know. I, I, did, I, was, I was shaking, and that happens in our meetings where you just feel like you're shaking and you're trembling inside. You might be, that's what's happening to me right now. It's, it's constant with me when I'm talking to you. It has not, never stopped since I've been here, but it happens every single time. I tremble inside with the fear of the Lord because I'm literally changing history by speaking the Word of God on this earth. And for 30 years, people will watch this. We had Kalamazoo has 25,000 views already, and it was, we, just, we were just in Michigan. It's two days old, three now. So it's going to go on for a long time. And so God is boosting it in the spirit so that it will be effective even through the media. So you're going to feel that. Okay, what I noticed, though, is, is that we don't have that exposure to that. But, but, but uh, Moses did. So when he, what he's saying here is that when you sit enthroned or when you are living in the shadow of the, of the Lord Most High, well, the problem with that is, and why I didn't see this, is because when I was there, there is no shadows. So when I was in paradise, I wasn't allowed to go into the city. I was taken to the throne room, but I was not allowed to see the city. I don't know how I got to the throne room. They, they took me in, but I wasn't allowed to see the mansions and everything there because I would have chained myself to a, and, and refused to leave. So I was in paradise, which is around the city. And it's just like this, it's just like the most beautiful uh, forests and, and tree, you know, the, the mountains and um, the river of life. But it's really bright and the sky is really, really blue. It's like sapphire blue. And the, the water is like liquid diamonds. It's like melted diamonds that comes from the throne. It's this big river. And so it's so bright. So I'm looking down and there's like a path and there's children playing because there's children that, that die early and they, 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 they play there and they live there and Jesus was playing with them and they're waiting for their parents to come until their parents come to heaven. So the, 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 the children are there playing and there's people everywhere, families, there's just everything's going on. And I looked down and there was no shadows. But it was so bright. So I'm like going like this and I'm like, so I looked up and there was no sun. But it was bright, but there was no place where it was coming from. It was everywhere. So there was no shadow. There was no way to make a shadow in heaven. So that's puzzling, right? Because you're saying that you're in the shadow or the shelter of the Most High, the shadow of the Almighty. Okay, what I saw was in the throne room is that, remember when Moses said, that he had to make everything according to how the Lord gave it to him because the Lord said, make everything in the tabernacle exactly to the specifications, the measurements that he had given him because it's an exact replica of what's in heaven. Remember that? So in heaven, you're gonna be so surprised because God is seated on the mercy seat, but the golden cherub that are there are actually real ones. So there's two cherubim, one on each side, and the wings are big, and they cover God's face to protect everyone in the throne room. Not to protect God, but to protect everyone else from his face. And those wings cast a shadow. So now you can see what's being said here. The shadow of the wings of, of the Most High God. It's the cherubim. God doesn't have wings. He's not a bird. But, but there's a cherubim. There's cherubim that have these big wings. They're known for their wings. And the seraphim are above. They have more wings. But if you look, only one set was used to fly, which they don't even need to fly. It's a spirit realm. There's no, there's no air, no wind, there's no, no lift, no gravity. You know. So the, if you look, it's really covering their face, covering their feet, and then they fly. But it's it's not that they need the wings. Angels don't need wings like you think. And you're gonna be surprised when you find out that most angels don't have wings. They don't need them. I don't know why everybody that has angels appear to them, they always have wings because most of the angels that appear to me, they're like, they look like men, but they're not men. <laughs> 
In fact, there's nobody on the earth as, as good looking as the ugliest angel. <laughs> Male or female. Angels are beyond anything I've ever seen. And the reason I know that most people who claim to see angels have not is because they're not shaken or changed by it. I, I, I can't handle angel visitation because it's, it's, it's overwhelming. Okay, but my point is, is that angels came to me, they did not need wings to fly. They would just run off into the air. They would just disappear. It was faster to do that than to fly. What they were operating was higher above. So the wings are for certain types and they have a function. So the wings cover God. That glory that was coming from the Father's face would hit the inside of the wing and the intensity would be blocked so that if you were at an angle diagonally to the mercy seat, it would cast a lesser, which he would call a shadow. But it's not a shadow, it's just the intensity from the, behind those wings is bright brighter than what's coming out and hitting. And if you were right there in the shadow of the Most High's wings, that you were safe and sound. But you couldn't handle being anywhere else and live on the earth. But in that place, does everybody understand what I said or do I need to go over it again? Because there, there is a place where those wings sh that shield the glory from the face of God, it comes out and if you're standing there, it's bright, there's no shadows, but there's an intensity that does not hit you, and you're glad that it doesn't, because you can't handle him. Okay, the only way that you can have the benefits of verses eight through 16 is you gotta fulfill these first two verses. You have to make the most high your dwelling place, not the drive through window, not visitation, it's habitation. Okay, so he told me there are three phases to the church. There's revelation, there's visitation, and there's habitation. Now we were in habitation. We're in the move of the Father. We've had the move of the Spirit and the move. We've had the Jesus movement. We've had the Holy Spirit, that crazy-matic, the charismatic movement. And now the last one is the move of the Father. It's habitation. It has to do with the body. He comes and he dwells with his people in habitation. This idea of getting all your prayers answered in protection has to do with making that your dwelling place where you never leave. So that place where that shadow is, which really isn't a shadow. Paul, Paul Moses saw that when God walked by the cleft, he wrote Psalms 91. Everybody agrees to that. When he wrote Psalms 91, it was out of the revelation that there is no way a disease could last through that, what he just went through. There's no demon that would dare be in the cleft of that rock with him. Nothing could harm him. And that the only thing left was angels to minister to him. That's what this prayer is. So when you pray, Everything I just said, say it. It'll take you 20 minutes. No, I'm just kidding. You're, I'm letting you now write from that because I'm going to say, Lord, I'm, in, I'm seated with you. Or I am in the shadow of the Most High. And I'm in that shadow and I'm hidden. And you are my strength. And this is how I pray. I'm just telling God what he's already said. But in that, it says, if I dwell in the sh shadow, then I'm secure and I rest in his shadow whose power no enemy can withstand. So in other words, no enemy would even dare to come near me, whether it be by day or by night, by arrows or whatever the translation says. Do you get what I'm saying? This is how you start your prayer. When you set yourself up like this in prayer, all of a sudden, it won't take you very long before God starts talking to you. Hey, about that car, go ahead and sell it. About this job, take it. About that girl you're dating, drop her to that guy, to marry him. In other words, it has nothing to do with requests. It had everything to do with living 
in habitation and then you have conversations. Now, if you study this out, you wouldn't have time to do this, but there are, there are studies that are done really deep into this whole chapter. I found, and you can uncover this as well, is that the whole idea about this verse and these verses is that it's the idea, the Hebrew scholar said it's an idea of you sitting on a couch and having a conversation with your creator and receiving counsel, receiving counsel in a communion on a couch talking in a counseling session. I'm encouraging you that I know this is a big step and I know how you've been trained. It is not wrong to make requests. It's part of prayer. But what I'm saying is, is that the shift has already happened in this time that we live in with, with the revelation that Paul already released about the mystery being revealed. And it's about the body of Christ now having the manifold wisdom of God released through them. That's happening now. And it, we're behind, but we're, we're doing fine, okay? But with that, you have to allow the acceleration to happen because of the fact that we're behind the curve. And we should be communing and letting God coach us on what to say. And he, he put it this way to me. He said, if you would get everything you say, would you be silent? He, he told me two things. I mean, if you really, really want to like clean it up in your life, these two things I know. He said, you, if you live your life as though you're going to get everything you say and everything you think is on a big screen so everybody can see it. He said, if you can do that, you're going to be fine. So big screen, everybody sees what I'm thinking. So it better be good. Everything I say, I better make room for it because I'm going to get it. So when you live that way, you're living in what, what, what's happening here because that's what Moses encountered. He realized that nothing could touch him. No disease, it says. We're going to learn that, right? Is this good? We good? Okay. Do you need a snack or something? All right. So that's how I pray. That's how I start out my prayers is is Paul would start out, um, you know, I pray to the Father of my Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul would pray to God the Father who was the Father of Jesus Christ. That's how he, he prayed. But people are still arguing about the Trinity. But Paul prayed that way, that there was a Father and a Son. So put that in your pipe and smoke it, you know. All right. Um, Psalms 91, th um, Let's see. Two, it says uh, on page five, it says, This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I will trust him. Okay, in the Passion Translation, I broke it down. It says, He is the hope that holds me, the stronghold to shelter me, the only God for me, my great confidence. And so what you would do is you would formulate a prayer saying these things in some way in your own words. Because... What I found out about God the Father is he likes to hear things even though he knows them. Yeah. And he's, he's very, I mean, you wouldn't know this, but if you look throughout scripture, he really doesn't say anything except through others. There's very few times where we have an actual account of him talking or doing anything. He doesn't interact. He talks through his son now. I mean, according to Hebrews, it says the language that God talks, he revealed himself through the prophets in times past, but in these last days, he speaks to us strictly through his son, is what it says. Okay, so now he speaks the language of the son to us in these last days. Okay, so when I say things to him, what I noticed when I was there, he, he didn't say anything to me. Jesus was talking to me. He just sat there. And what I realized he wasn't old. He was, what I could see of him, he was young. He wasn't old. He was the ancient of days, but he was, wasn't old. He was a young man. I, I mean, that's the impression I got. I mean, he didn't have tight jeans on or anything like that. Or, 
But I mean, I don't know, you know, Philip. But he's the hope that holds me. So I tell him that. You're the hope that holds me. You hold me steady. And, and I say, you're the stronghold that shelters me. You're the one that I run into. Like David said, you know, he's a stronghold in my fortress. The one I run into in times of trouble. And David had it right. Saul had it wrong, but David had it right. Okay, the only God for me. In other words, I've chosen you as my only God. He loves to hear these things. That's why they're there. So this is part of prayer. But it doesn't seem like you're getting to the thing you want to ask him about. And that is our culture. Because I remember when I had, I was forced to land and I, I needed fuel. I was in a situation where I needed a fuel and I was in an emergency. And um, I had, I had the, uh, the, the government meet me to help me because it was in, a, in another country. And they helped me, but he, he said, well, we got to go get fuel, but we're going to have to do it this way. Because I had, I had a land on, on a, an un, you know, uncontrolled area, a dirt, a dirt strip, no fuel. So I was taken to town and this official said, now understand this culture, we have to stand and we, I have to ask them about their family and about their, their well-being, and we're gonna have to talk for about three or four minutes. You just be quiet. Because in order to get this fuel, I can't show that I don't care about them. Well, that was a revelation. And so we had to do that. We had to go several places until I got enough to put in my, my small airplane. And I had to listen to him, you know, talk about, you know, Sally Joe and, you know, But we got all the fuel. But the people didn't feel like the only reason we were there was because they had something we needed. Do you get it? And that's what I realized God is like. We run to him because we need something, but we, we haven't asked him about him. You know, we haven't like let him. Because one day I asked him years ago, I said, you know, what's Lord, what is on your heart right now? What is a burden on your heart? And out loud he said, this was like probably 15 years, well more than that because I was here. So it was a long time ago. He said, he said the children in China. And he showed me dumpsters with ch babies in them. Well at the time there was nothing like that even heard of, you know, but it was happening, we just didn't know it. And he said, my heart is for the children in China. And so I started praying for China. But it was strictly by revelation, but it was only because I asked, I would have known. Because it wasn't released by our government and anything that was going on there until recently, right? Okay? All right, it's the same way with God, is you've got to make it so that you're not just coming to Him because you need something. He wants to have a relationship with you. And this is what I, I, I sensed about him, is he's actually bashful. I mean, think about it, he's perfect. And everything around him's created. So when he created us, I knew that he had created us in his image so that he would have somebody to have fellowship with. And that was his whole intention. So he made us like him, but the liability was, the image of God was free will, because that's what God has, free will. So he had to give man free will, which means that that's a big liability, and that's why he already designed to have Jesus slain from the foundation of the world, because he knew we would fall. But it was worth it to him, because he wanted fellowship. He wanted to have that time when he came down in the garden and, and talked with them. They didn't have prayer requests. So it was just communion back and forth because they didn't need anything. You get it? You getting it? Now in this broken world, we need a lot of things. But you gotta remember that God's still God and He has needs. He really does. He created us because He had a need to have, He wanted fellowship. That's His need, is He's lonely. But He would never tell you that. You 
you know what I just thought? I, I thought, I wish I would have been taught this when I was a kid. What would have happened if I wouldn't, what I just said? I mean, how many people know that? But he loves us. The reason he made the earth and us was so that he could have fellowship with someone like him. And what does this world do? What does the church do? They make us so unlike him. They make him unreachable. They keep us in a small place. And so we don't feel like we have any ability to communicate with him and fellowship with him. And the whole time, it's totally the opposite. So I'm trying to show you this is what I pray. Um, I can keep going a couple more minutes and then Kathy's gonna pray here. Um, let's go to page seven, we'll do one more and then you guys can do the rest. Um, Psalms 91.3 says, For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from de every deadly disease. Um, in Passion Translation it says, He will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy. He will protect you from false accusation and any an deadly curse. For he will save you from the trap of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Okay, so I take the Passion Translation because I, I bullet point it for you. And, and I tell the Lord that uh, he's gonna rescue me from every hidden trap of the enemy, every, every single trap. Everything that's hidden will be made known. Okay, this is how I pray for protection. I tell the Lord what he's already promised me. But see, everything that you read in the scripture was given by revelation to someone. It wasn't necessarily that everybody understood it on their own. You realize that all the prophets, when they spoke and when they wrote, that they didn't understand half of what they were doing or saying. They were being obedient for our benefit. Okay, so we take this, and I realize now that nothing hidden will stay hidden. That God's gonna help me and protect me. I'm not gonna fall into a trap. And so this is how I pray for protection. And I also know that I'm protected from any false accusation and any deadly curse. So I, I know that no matter what's working inside my body, whatever's working against me on the outside, I know that God is protecting me from that. And it won't succeed. And so this is how I pray. So that's why I don't pray for money. Because if the money stops flowing, I'll just stay home. And, and you're thinking, this is supposed to be a man of faith? Yeah, it's a man of faith. Because if God stops blowing into my sail, I'm swimming home. Because if he stops breathing, I'm not going anywhere. The revelation that I don't want to know by default is that he was doing all this. I don't want that revelation by default because I was stupid. I want to keep that before me now, that it, he's the breath that keeps me going. And if he stops breathing, I stop breathing. If, if, if he's doing this, then he can keep doing it. But if he stops it, then guess what? I'm, I'm not going to do anything more. If you do this about your life and you pray this way, it releases you from the responsibility of manifestation. Your job is to believe. And the word is trust. You have to build yourself up in the knowledge of his will, which is his character. It's who he is. God would never lie. So I know that he's not lying, so I'm protected. And so I just tell him, I know you're not a liar, and I know I dwell in the most high, uh, the shelter of the shadow. I said, I'm protected from everything. And so I don't pray, and I don't pray for money because he, if he's really doing this, then he's, he's really gonna finance it. He's gonna do that, and that's what he's gonna do for you. The other thing that you've gotta resolve is, is that if you were to pass away, it's a promotion. You gotta remember that. that the last enemy we have, according to scripture, is the fear of death, right? Okay, 
That's what Paul said is the last enemy. Well, so let's go at that. Let's just go at that head on. Why, why do we avoid these things? We look in the nose, nose to nose with death, and you say, death, where is your sting? This is what I saw. I mean, I saw that we're celebrated when we arrive there. It's a promotion. It's not a penalty. So instead of thinking about death, think about life. And if you are, that's why it says to live is Christ, to die is gain. But it also says that I die daily. And we are to carry our cross or to carry his death. The reason why is it gets rid of the fear of death. And so if we get rid of the fear of death, then essentially death has no power over us because it has to do with a mental anguish. It's a torment in our, our mind because why? We can't control it. So prayer should be allowing yourself to be placed in the perfect will of God by vocalizing it telling God, and I, I'm telling you, you'll get further by complimenting him. <laughs> then going right for the request. And so my grandfather, uh, he, he got saved right before he passed away. He was my favorite, he was my favorite. And I would, he would take me and sit me on his lap and tell me stories about World War II, and he would tell me all these stories about how God preserved him and um, he loved me. He gave me more attention than my dad did. And so I loved to go over there. And um, he would sit and tell me stories. And I would just look at, and um, you saw Lou, right? Lou, the, the, our pilot? Lou looks exactly like my grandfather, exactly. But I would sit on his lap and I would look up at him and I would say, Grandpa, you're so handsome. I just love you. And I was just like eight, nine years old. And this is what he would say, oh, you just want the quarters that are in my pocket. <laughs> That's what he would, he would say, because he always had quarters in his pocket and he would, he would make noise with them, you know. And he would always give me 50 cents. Every time he saw me, he would give me 50 cents. And, but I wasn't saying that because I wanted his quarters. But it was that exchange that I had with my grandfather and I loved him because he, I felt like I was safe around him and he loved me. And this is the idea that we have to get with God is that, is that he is here to protect us, but we have to be in that shelter the most high. So let's pray. Um, Kathy, come on up and, and uh, let's, let's hit it in the spirit. Are you ready? Oh, you're good? Okay. And we got a microphone for her. Okay, we're just going to pray. Now, here's the thing. You, you, you can, I would stay for a few minutes and pray with us. And I'm going to slip out and get ready for tonight because we got a lot of things to do tonight with the ministry. We're going to be ministering to you. Children are going to be helping me. But we're going to meet back to worship. Um, and we're going to start right before 6.30 with worship. And um, so I will see you then. And um, then there's tomorrow morning too as well. But tonight, what we're going to do is the kids, I'm going to train the kids uh, to minister healing. So there, we're going to be praying over prayer claws and handing them out to y'all. And then also we have um, special rocks that have the power words on them, like little words. And um, they're going to pray over them. And then they're going to pray and ask Jesus on who to give them to. So they're going to be delivering you words tonight. I'm going to teach them how to prophesy. And I got a bunch of gifts for them. We got musical instruments to give out. And, um, you know, we're going to have the, a, a, still a service and, and a little bit uh, shorter message, of course. But um, so we will see tonight. But in prayer, when you pray now, make sure that you frame your prayers in relationship, knowing that you win and it's not a loss for you to go to heaven. But while you're here, you ought to have the fight in you and know that God wants to give you something that's going to change this whole generation. Everything he gives us is for somebody else. And you don't hear that very much. But every, he showed me everything that is in my life is for somebody else. It's to help and influence someone else. It makes it so we're more effective. I remember my friend, 
we used to get together and pray in tongues for three, four hours. And that's how I met Rachel back there that work, works for us. Is that she would come to this, these meetings where we would just pray. We're, we weren't allowed to talk in English. Everybody prayed in tongues for hours. And that's all we did was pray in tongues. We did that for years. Nobody, nobody knew us. We were all nobodies. Next thing you know, Sid Roth calls him to be on the show. He went on before I did. And then I got asked to go on. And then a couple hour, a couple hour, a couple years later, he's like all depressed. He's saying, Kevin, you know, like I feel like the whole thing was not worth it. I go, you gotta be kidding me. I go, look where we're at now. Look what, we were praying out the mysteries the whole time. You, all you guys prayed out the launch pad for me. And you too. He goes, wow. And that's what we, we, you have to realize is that tongues, praying in the spirit is not a waste of time because you're praying out the mysteries. So can you stay for a little bit and just pray in the spirit with us? And we'll pray out the mysteries. And what it does is it starts to hook your spirit up with your mouth. And then your conversations will start to change in the coming days too as well. I realized that after praying in tongues for extended periods, that it started to change the way things were happening in my life and things were result. So if something catches you, like right now, if something's bothering you, if you pray in the spirit, all of a sudden you'll feel like something's resolved, but you don't know it yet. But then within a day or two, you get news that it's all resolved. And what it was is your spirit caught it in tongues. I know this. I saw this on the other side, that the spirit preemptively prays for us. So go ahead, Kath. You want to share something? Go ahead. All righty. Who's excited to pray in the spirit? Now, do you guys are welcome to stand up or sit down? Whatever your, or, or kneel. Everybody kind of has, when we're at the house, we like to walk around or um, sometimes we put headsets in if we're by ourselves, you know, just kind of get in the zone. <clears throat> but let's just do um, what we were just taught. Let's actually, in Psalms 91, it says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. So let's just say that. We'll say, <clears throat> excuse me, let's just say, Lord, you are my fortress. You are my God. I trust you. Mm, let's say that again. Let's say, Lord, Lord you are my fortress. You are my, fortress. You are my refuge. You are my, refuge. <clears throat> my God, God, you will I trust. You will I trust. Do you know that's like music to his ears? To actually have someone say, I trust you. He loves us so much. Let's just raise our hands. <clears throat> He loves us so much. Is my microphone okay, Anna? I know. She's trying to teach me where to hold it. Thank you, Lord. We just love you. We say that we trust you. You are faithful and true. There's no shadow of turning in you. Thank you, Lord, for making a way for us to dwell in the holy place with you. Ha, let, just let the Holy Spirit pray through you. We set this prayer time aside as holy unto you, Lord. We yield to you. Just let your spirit pray. Let the Holy Spirit pray through you. Tell the Lord, thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We don't take it. We don't take the gift of the Holy Spirit for granted. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for strengthening us to pray what you need us to pray. 
prasakoto. I feel like just to ex exhort us all as we're praying is really think about if this was your last day. It's not, but let's just say if it was, what sort of things would you want to let the Holy Spirit pray through you? You'd want each utterance to be with purity and passion. Pray from that place. It says, with joy, we draw from the wells of salvation. And we thank you, Lord, for strength to bring forth, to pray out everything you need us to pray out today. Shotomo Ramaste, today is the day of salvation. Shatoko Rabaste, Itambo Ramamaso, Morre Badaboshtokore, Ifandokorobobushte, praying from a place of love. You are so loved. He who did not spare his own son, how much more with him will he freely give us all things? We're not begging. We're just co-labors together. We're working with God. We're working with the Holy Spirit. We're Kamala Mosto, Mashikibande, Brodo Stodoshte, Borro, the beauty of holiness. Sham praying from that place, seated in heavenly places, far above. Shondo Rabush, co laborers, co -la joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Shabor Rashte, Istaradash, this honor have all the saints. Shamor Ramaste, Shamor Ramaste, Morobo Sikibasho, Morre Basoto, he loves us so much. Basaniki Amakor Ramase, thank you, Lord, for your love, your inexpressible love for us, Lord. Oh, we thank you that as we pray in the Holy Spirit, we are securing ourselves. We're keeping ourselves in your perfect love. Your perfect love drives out all fear. Your voshete show photo. Just see that perfect love driving out anything that's not of him, that's trying to come near your dwelling. No plague will come near your dwelling. No plague comes near your dwelling. So he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Shavoto. When we pray in the spirit, we go under the radar. Under the radar. Free, high spiritual realms. Far above. Far above. Far above. Ha, ha, ha. Sheke, hey. Shoto, re. Shoto, re. Kaso, torre. Baso, torre. Hey, show. Let the Holy Spirit have his way. Let the Holy Spirit have his way. Holy Spirit, we let you have your way. Free flow, free flow. Let him flow, and then you'll know. It's not the other way around. We let him flow. We flow with him. Then we'll know. Then we'll know. Shapateshe, that's the way. We believe, and then we see. We believe, and then we see. Pashamundo. Prokoshte beshte beshte. Oh, building ourselves up on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Halandorande shepo koramba sambandosto corre beshte. Borrabasa korrabasa kito corre bese. Bondorambande so korrabase kete. Oh, this is a wonderful place. Moshe kete. Moshe Kete, Ishanondoro. Oh, you're doing, this is wonderful, wonderful. This is music to the Lord. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. He loves us so much. He, he is able to subdue all things to himself. Even that includes us. He's drawing us into a deeper place. Let him just draw you in. He says, come unto me, all you that are weary and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. And this is the rest. And this is the refreshing, he says, with stammering lips. And another tongue will I speak to this people. And we will listen. We won't be like the ones that listen, wouldn't listen. We listen. We say, yes, Lord. Show, speak to me with stammering lips and another tongue. Speak to me, Lord. Bahalamorra, bandabokorre, basanondorre, basanondorre. 
vasa kala vorra vasa torra vasa fosho forra vasha kete korrasho orra baba baso korra baba so korrama sete horra masa korra mende borra mende Orra baba so korra baba so korra baba so korra baba so. We thank you, Lord, for all those who have gone before us. Horra baba sekiate. We say more, Lord, more, Lord. Let the Lord heat you up. Say more, Lord. Put your hand on your belly. Say fresh fire. More, Lord. We need. We have that. We have that responsibility to let the Lord heat us up hotter, because the promise is to us and to our children's children's children. Okay, so we got to have something to carry on. Okay, we're not just ma- maintaining what's been given, but we're heating it up. Hotter and hotter and hotter. We're letting the Lord have his way, have his way, increasing our capacity for more because it's got to keep going. It's got to go to the next generation and the next generation. The fire, 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 hotter, hotter, hotter. Say, Lord, make us hotter. Make us hotter. We're willing and obedient. It says if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. We're willing and obedient. When the people willingly offered themselves, the Lord turned. There was a great victory when the people willingly offered themselves. Now, let me just tell you something. Look at me, everybody. You are all, everybody's, this is like a really, really significantly precious prayer time. Okay, it's really, you guys are just really doing a great job. The Lord's so happy. He's so happy. It's a father and his family. It says, when the people willingly offered themselves, there was a great victory. Okay, so when we're willing and obedient, and there's something about praying in the Spirit, and I'm telling you this because we want to go a little bit further. But it, it's something about, it's a very humbling, you know, because it's like, you know what I mean? It's very humbling, and it's something that maybe we're more comfortable doing alone. But when you're in a corporate setting like this, it's very humbling. So we're, off, we're willingly offering our, our part of ourselves, praying with each other. And it's, it's a fragrance to the Lord. And I just tell you guys, thank you for being willing and obedient. But he wants... You know, you kind of hit this place sometimes where are we just going to kind of just keep in our normal, our normal like uh, sort of words that we're used to saying, or we're going to like say, okay, this is a little, I don't know everybody in here, but I'm just going to let the Holy, I'm going to yield a little bit. We're living sacrifices. So as we continue, I just wanted to encourage you because I have a friend that I pray with, and even though we're very close it kind of gets that way almost every single time where I'm like, oh, Lord, this is, I'm not saying that to, I'm just thinking it. I'm like, Lord, this is a little bit uncomfortable, you know, to be this vulnerable with another human being, you know? It's just so personal, your prayer language. And, um, but every time we just kind of go and we press through, it's like there's this place we get to that we were, we were probably having a wonderful day, but we get to this place that we didn't even know was there. You know, it's like, whoa, I'm so thankful that we didn't give up because it was great already, but this is like, whoo. So let's just kind of yield to the Holy Spirit and let him and purposefully pray out the words he gives you. Just like you're digging nuggets of gold out. And these are, you know, like Kevin was saying that we're praying today for tomorrow. You know, you're like, you might be praying out your, your son or your daughter's spouse right now. You might be calling them into existence. Not, or they're probably already alive, but calling them into this planet or into, the, into your lives. So you know what I'm saying? So let's just continue. I think you all know what I'm saying. I can tell that we're all, all on the same page today, which is really beautiful. So let's just go in a little bit more. Um, we're not going to go super long so you guys can rest, but let's just let's go till we're done, okay? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We go a little bit further, Lord, just like Jesus did. He went a little bit further. Nevertheless, Lord, not our will, but your will. Hatula shelehelevuta la vikita la vikito. Oh, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand. Oh, raneshenete. Oh, raneshenete. Oh, rabashte. 
Orababa sukula viata kalavisto. Orababa sukura mamase. Oh, holy, 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 bala vora mamaso. Mande giamo kurra mamase. Orababa sukura babase. Orababa sukura babase. Ora baba bo socorra baba base. Ora bobo borra baba base. Ora bobo borra baba se. Ora bobo borra baba se. Ora bobo. Ora bobo bo she. And just ask the Lord as you're praying in other tongues, just say, you don't have to say it out loud, but just be. Uh, agreeing that the person to your left and the right that they have strength to pray out you know each person has a supply of the spirit and they have answers and they're going to see things so we all want to go in together so we pray for those people Lord on our left and our right that they're going to have strength to bring forth hallelujah purra mahase ha 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 hallelujah shorra bisanongorra busto oh high spiritual realms Ho Rama, seated in heavenly places far above. Ha la vocorro, eyes to see and ears to hear. O Rama Maso, 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 O Rama Maso. I pateshe, I pateshe, e kiro noto, O Rama ste, O Rama ste, ala vitave. A la vitave, a foshotorro, a foshotorro, a foshotorro, vashatakate, ora vashete, ora vasoto, ora vasoto, ora vasoto, ravasikave shotorro, a vasoto corre shavato, horra mamanda burra mamaso, morra mamamaso, morra mamamaso. Ha ha, she he, shoho, shava, she ve, shotorro, 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 bariata, bariata, lavate, lavate, corre, abaraborre, 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 abaraborre. Ah, baraborre. Ha, la vorre, he. Ha, la vorre, he. Ha, la vorre, he. Ha, la vorre, he. Ita vashenenke. Ashevitenenke. Ashenita vando. Basananda keste. Borra baba busto. Bara bara borra ambaria stondorre. Ambari ambonda bokor rambande shte. Ambara banda bokor rambande beshte. Borra baba basso korra baba bate. Borra baba basso korra baba baste. Borra baba babo borra baba babaste. Borra baba baba korra baba baba bashto. Borra baba babashta borra baba babashte. Borra baba babashta borra baba 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 babahapa. Poco raba shamande bokorra masanda borrama shabare bokorra bahasta borraba kabate bave 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 ha 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 shotore 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 shoto rekeke ha 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 hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You are all glorious. You are victorious. You are all glorious. Just raise your hands and then just tell him that you are all glorious. 
You are victorious. We love you, Lord. We love you. Thank you, Father. Just say, tell, you, tell your Father, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Shorashete. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Halamondo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are the Prince of Peace. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. It will be your plan that stands, Lord. We set ourselves in agreement with your plan. We come out of agreement with the plan of man. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so now this I know. Well, I'm just saying that this I, well, I, this I know. When I say that, it makes me think... Uh, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. But that is about how simple it is. But this is what I do know, is because you've allowed him to flow, and we've come to a place, like, I know Dale and Jan know this, that we could just keep going, and Rachel, a lot of you, most of you are that way, but we, we're, we're learning just to, like, you know, hook hook up and unhook, and but we can always rehook. And I want you guys to like go when you, next time you pray, pray from this place, you know, just keep going. But we're going to let everybody rest a little bit. But I do know that because we let him flow through us, that you're going to know. You're going to know. You're going to have answers are going to be popping like popcorn. You're going to know. You're going to know. You're going to know. You're going to know. You guys in the sound booth, you're going to know. So, yeah, because these people back there in the sound booth, those are all prayer people back there. They're like multitasking. But um, I'm just going to let um, Pastor Jan close out for me. And um, we're just going to seal it up, just real short. And we'll just, we're just going to seal it up and just, you know, seal it up and tell them to, when we're coming back, which is going to be around 6, 620. 620 if you want to have a good seat, which they're all good seats, so. All right. Hallelujah. Wasn't that precious? It's such a wonderful thing to be able to come into the Father's presence as one voice. I mean, there's nothing like it. So, anyway, again, you heard it, uh, four, uh, six, not four, 620. We'll be back this evening just to be uh, in the presence of the Lord, Dr. Kevin's going to have a precious message again. And of course, we're going to enter into the heavenlies as the music takes us there. Aren't you glad for what the music does? <laughs> Truly, if you can't worship the Lord in that atmosphere, we need to pray for you. Hallelujah, that's just the truth. Let me pray for you quickly and we'll dismiss. Father, we do thank you for this afternoon. We thank you, Lord, for all that has taken place in the precious throne room of heaven as we entered in, Lord. What a wonderful thing to understand that we are welcomed on the throne that Jesus paid the price for us to be seated there. And there is no questions when we're seated in our heavenly throne. We love you, Father. We thank you for the Spirit of God that has moved. And we dismiss with your peace and your rest in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Who is this man clothed in glory?